We're in the next part now. They should be restoring power right now. And I don't know why it's not happening, but whatever. I'm in ready board. Like I mentioned that like racist undertones are coming back to the country because people who have any history of the land will feel embittered by being left in a group area that historically was benefited, but now because it shares its electrical infrastructure with a historically unloved portion of the country, they are now suffering. So now they are literally, there's like this hostility inside suburbia where there are breakaways of people who are like, if only you were not in my city, likely I will still have electricity. The black government is an Uncle Tom and it is underestimating black town or non-white townships, non-white areas that are largely non-white uh, to benefit the regions of this country that are largely white, such that the historically advantaged or privileged among us are starting to be like, if only I was not in such close proximity to black people, I would not be suffering so badly with power cuts. Understand for the life of you that everybody here in the land is making right observations about the inequality of this load shedding crisis. They know that where it is, that it is hugely gentrified, inland, opulent, powerful, wealthy, and largely white. There are no power cuts, or at least not as badly as the situation. My older sister lives in Morningside. She does not know this pain. She doesn't know the struggle. I used to live in four ways back when I was there. I never had this issue. I never had these struggles. And so therefore, South Africa is literally reigniting a beast that was buried long ago by simply continuing to be unfair without saying it in so many words, without putting it in legislation so it is not systematic in its oppressive nature. It is just a tacit beast that is lying down that looks like it's not there and it's one day going to get up, roar, rear its ugly head and afflict everybody. There has been a spike or an increase in racism in this country because of these power cuts, because due to the fact that these power cuts are highlighting a historical inequality that is still, like I said, pulsing Pulsating. It is still pulsating. It is literally still roaming the veins, coursing through them of the South African freaking jugular. That is what is going on. So whatever oppression of the past that we overcame, whatever new rainbow nation that we are now walking in, hoping to do a better thing tomorrow, all of these benefits of overcoming racism. So my next door neighbor's surname is Van Niekerk and my other next door neighbor's uh, surname is Singh. My other next door neighbor's surname is Morgan and my other next door neighbor's surname is Mazibugo. The other one's surname is like, you know, Shabalala. That diversification ought to be a beautiful thing and we should be grateful for it. But it is causing Mr. Singh to kind of like, you know, gnash his teeth because he used to have Indian privileges. Mrs. Morgan to gnash her teeth because she used to have colored privileges. Mr. Van Niekerk to gnash his teeth because he used to have white privileges. And Mr. Mazibugo to be like, but what do I have to do with your suffering? Because I've never had privileges and because he's black. And all of these people are going to have low-key, mild hostilities in their bellies because the black person can feel there's some issues and everybody else feels low-key entitled to much better treatment than before. And, because, and however, upon gazing, especially for Mr. Van Niekerk, that he is encircled by Singh, Morgan, and Mazibugo, he is then going to be like, if only Mr. Singh, Mr. Mazibugo, and Mrs. Morgan was not all up in my grill, I would not have these power cuts. They are literally causing the country to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Like you have been to war and you are out of war now, but you are still getting flashbacks, memories of it. And it's wreaking havoc in your bones. There is so much brewing racism in this country and it is caused by an irresponsible Uncle Tom government that has decided to create to keep apartheid low-key operational in the country without anybody calling it such as that because like I said it's no longer systematic it's just tacit it's literally tacit it's dormant it's pulsating however with a weak pulse but this is something that could be brought back to life again and therefore this time around when we riot this time around when we fight what are we gonna riot and fight for since this is no longer systematic oppression but I mean, virtue of it being systematic, it suggests that the system has made it law. And so you can go to court and fight it. You can go to court and overwhelm it. You can try to get repealed an oppressive law. But when then nobody is actually saying that we are in the Group Areas Act anymore because it's not written down in paper. The issue then on that day is tacit. It is spiritual. It is unspoken. It is ominously eerie, like a poltergeist in the room. Nobody really sees it, but it's moving 
cups and saucers all over the show, causing people to be scared. When you are dealing with a poltergeist, racist, apartheid regime that is still haunting the country, and we are still in group areas freaking act, how do you conquer that? It's very hard for white people to call a spade a spade because then they're going to get called racist. It's very hard for black people to accuse white people for not wanting them in their neighborhoods because then they are going to be sounding indigenous like that. Accusers and constantly flailing the race card. And it is going to also be rough for Indian people and colored people to be like, my life sucks still, but I am in 2023. And I low-key gauged that I would not have such a bad life if I didn't live next to Mr. Mazibugo. The black-on-black violence will continue to intensify as well between black people who have got it a little bit better than other black people. Like me having a little bit of a ravenous war with my sister who keeps on gloating about her Santon power, her power-fied state in Santon, her power-fueled ecosystem there where nothing chokes up because you're living next to the premier of Johannesburg. I am embittered by how my sister gloats about the fact that she has no power cuts. That is black on black violence. My sister is benefiting from living in a super gentrified neighborhood that is very far away from gassies, from townships. However, my sister would likely cause a a white person living in my neighborhood to look at her like, who do you think you are? Because you're living in a neighborhood I'm supposed to be in. Just because apartheid was repealed, you just so happen to have taken my slot in Santa, so get over yourself. This is the kind of stuff that's going to cause little fights in cockpits that are going to rear demons from the past, literally cause strong men and principalities that have been laid to rest long ago to rise again. There are a whole bunch of disquieted white people in this country that can't speak as boldly as they want to speak because they're going to get called racist against the black government. And they ought to raise their voices because they are literally a bunch of ludicrous, insensitive, crazy Uncle Toms that are running the country into the ground with their racist political strategy in rolling out even something so, like, ought be equal situation like power cuts. Like, the black government is an Uncle Tom to the apartheid regime that has come and gone and if white people raise that they're gonna get called kind of unhealed and unrecovered and unrehabilitated from their like forefathers folly and so they literally have to just keep quiet shut up and say nothing black people who complain in the previously black only areas like from soweto or whatever or alex they just get ignored <laughs> they they are they they won't even get told that they're racist they just get ignored like that is the government strategy for poor black people or people black people who don't have enough money to actually stand in court they just get ignored and then everybody else is just like mm, mm. our government cannot get accused of being racist against black people and against white people i guess because they're black like you know fleeing from accountability because of your skin color there we go power came back there you go that's a street light that you're looking at so i guess it's time to go in the house and take a shower and eat dinner and be good and i hope that this is my last part the or my second last part the, the black government cannot be accused like really that's the word of being exactly what they are and uncle tom because based on where it is that this accusation is coming from they will either write off the accuser as racist or what are you talking about but i'm black based on the directionality of where that accusation is coming from that is the travesty of what's going on in south africa we overcome one strong man and then there is another silly little namby pamby strong man that we can't even give a name or a title that is doing the exact same thing as the former strong man resuscitating that gangster putting a defibrillator on his dead heart and making him run the show but this time we don't have a right to recourse because the moment we call them out for what they are or who they are they claim that we are calling them racist when they're black but i'm black i can't be racist that is my country final part